What's up, bro? How you doing, John? I'm pretty good, man. How are you? I'm just chilling, dude. I'm actually at the gym right now. Ended up doing a little bit of a later workout than I wanted to. But um, I figured I'd take a little intermission about halfway through so we could do a little live video here, talk about some fitness. How's your day been? Yeah. Pretty good, man. I didn't have school today, which was dope. So I got my workout in earlier than I usually do. Yeah? Where you go to school at? I'm at a school called Kennesaw State in Georgia. Oh, cool. Okay, so you're way down south. I'm in Baltimore, Maryland. Got you. Big Ravens guy? No, I'm actually a Steelers fan. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm in, enemy, I'm in enemy territory, though, dude. But don't tell any of my Steelers friends. Um, I actually have a soft spot for the Ravens since I live like a 10-minute walk away from the stadium. Oh, shoot, bro. Have you gone to any games at all? Uh, last year, I didn't really get much of a chance, obviously. But um, yeah. this year, I'm definitely planning on going to the home game they have versus Steelers. Got you. That'll be dope. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get right into the video, bro. Um, so, yeah. you said you got to get your uh, workout in a little bit earlier. Tell me about what you did. Yeah, so today was a pull day, and we're incorporating – my coach has me incorporating deadlifts back into my plan. Okay. And I'm not a huge advocate for deadlifts just because mainly not many people do them correctly. Right. And so, obviously, if you're not going to do a deadlift correctly – that is the one exercise that I would say will mess you up the most okay. in the gym because it's, you're moving, it's engaging your entire body. It's not like if you screw up a bench, yeah, your upper body is going to be messed up. Your chest can be messed up, your shoulder, whatever, but you, you'll still have your legs. If you mess up a deadlift, that's going to mess up your back. That could mess up your legs. You could pull something even in your bicep trying to, if you try and pull the bar too hard with your arms. So I haven't deadlifted in a long time. And so today was my first time like really deadlifting. So I had some fun with it, worked up to a top set at 365 pretty easily, which was a lot better than I anticipated doing. Nice. And so, okay. Yeah. So after that, let's see, we had some rows and pretty much just killed my lats. Uh, oh, what? Deltoid and just pretty much just destroyed my back. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a bicep finisher of a grand set that was bicep curl and then reverse grip pull-ups and then some hammer curls. And by the time I was done with my third set of that uh, super grand set, I was, my arms felt like they were going to explode. Okay. So how many wild? Yeah. So how many days a week do you work out and are your workouts always like super intense like that? Yeah, so I work out six days a week, Okay. which I don't recommend for a lot of people. It's just what I've gotten into the zone of doing, and my body's gotten used to being able to handle that workload. Mm -hmm. But I go six days a week. Um, the plan I'm on right now is pretty intense every single day for the most part, and I just listen to my body, really. So if I'm like back day to day, I went heavy on deadlifts, which I haven't done in a long time. So tomorrow I'm kind of assuming I'm going to wake up and not have the best feeling in my body. And so that could mean tomorrow, which is another leg day for me, I dial it back a few notches. Whereas on the opposite, if I wake up and feel great, then heck yeah, I'm a full level 10, go hard. But I recommend just people listen to their body. Like that's what I do. And that's what I've figured to be the best. Okay. Yeah. So I love that as far as like listening to your body goes, but it's hard to like, from a fitness coach perspective, it's hard to yeah. tell people like, Oh, listen to your body. Because a lot of people that aren't like super familiar with exercise, working out, dieting, like they don't really know what that means, especially if someone is like really overweight or really out of shape, like no offense. You know what I mean? I'm not talking bad about anyone, but at the same time, if you if someone is like that, they might feel like crap all the time and be like, yeah. oh, like this is just how it's supposed to feel. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I completely get that. while I respect that that definitely works for you, like how old are you, bro? Probably like 22? Yeah, I'm 21. Okay. Yeah. So when I was 20 or 21, actually, no, I had to be 22. I was the biggest I was ever in my life. I was going to the gym like seven days a week. Um, but that program 
didn't really work for me as I got older because I had like other things I was passionate about and working on. I just didn't mm -hmm. have the time to go to the gym six or seven days a week. And I was like a total slave to my fitness. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, and I, and I hated that. So it changed my entire philosophy on fitness. So while we agree on um, like listening to your body and I agree with you about deadlifts too, we definitely yeah. disagree on like how often to go to the gym. But actually, I shouldn't even say we disagree because we do agree that you should listen to your body and you're right now listening to your body. But at the same time, in a couple of years, listening to your body, it might not be the same as it is right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I completely get that. And I think another thing that people struggle with is, especially like when I get a new client and they're first starting out, a lot of the times you'll get a client or someone that has been in the gym before and they really just need the guidance. Yeah. But sometimes you'll get someone who you'll ask them, have you ever had any training experience before? And they'll say, no, this is like my first time. I want to get into it. And yeah. you have to really dial in and explain to them that, okay, I'm not going to have you going to the gym six, seven days a week. And we're not going to jump into this full blown right away. What I like to do right. with my clients personally is I like just very small increments and small steps. So that way we're always moving forward and never really taking a step backwards. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do with people is if they've got no training experience at all, I like to start them off on a three day plan. Like the, the most simple thing you can do, you have a push day, you have a pull day and you have a leg day. Okay. We're going to get you in there and we're going to get you just acclimated to the gym and get you acclimated to what everything feels like, what it's going to feel like to be sore what it's going to feel like to have your muscles actually ache when you wake up the next day. And I think once they keep going and going, they think that um, they don't have that sore feeling. And they think that means that they're, they've recovered and their body is perfectly okay. If you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they get into the sense that, okay, well, I've been going three days a week. I'm now at four days a week. And they think that if they don't, um, how should I phrase this? So they go up to four days a week and then their body is just like killing them or whatever, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And they have an injury or something like that. And they think that they need to push through it because they think if they take a day off that it's going to just completely ruin everything that they have and everything that they've built up and don't understand that it's much better to take that day or to, um, just let your body recover and get proper nutrients in and then you can go back and have a killer workout the next week and you can go back to your normal routine as right. opposed to overdoing it to where, mm -hmm. okay, now you're screwed. You, you tore a muscle and you're, you can't train that muscle group for two months. Right. Or they're just miserable. They're like, Oh my goodness, this sucks. Like I'm, I'm sore every day. Like I just can't keep doing it. And then they quit. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. my approach <laughs> is very similar to that to the people that are starting off. But I would say I take it even easier on people just starting off. Like I'll tell people, like I wrote a book and I'm going to publish it here soon. And I tell oh, people, nice. yeah, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I tell people to start off with just one day a week, like just go one day every week. Yeah. Because some people like if they jump into that, it's like a, it's, it's a lifestyle. You know what I mean? If you go to the exactly. gym three days a week, that's a lifestyle. And for some people mm -hmm. that's, it's too much to, to start off doing that. So just go one day go on like yeah. Thursdays. And then once you get used to going on Thursdays, obviously you're not going to make any gains going once a week, but that's not the point. The point yeah. is for them to get acclimated to going to the gym and living that lifestyle. Once they get used to going once a week and they don't get sore like the next day or two days after. Um, Cause you know, sometimes you get the sorest like 48 hours after not 24 hours after. Yep. But once that's easy, start going twice a week and you can make gains going twice a week, not great gains. Like you're not going to come out looking like uh, Ronnie Coleman or anything, but you can make decent gains going twice a week. Yeah. And then once you're going three times a week, bro, like for me, I only go three times a week now. Yeah. And I don't know if you looked at my profile at all, but like, this is the leanest I've ever been. I actually gain muscle and lose fat every week. So let me just show you what I'm working with right now. So I don't know if you can really see this lighting kind of sucks. Oh, yeah, man. Heck, yeah. But I'm super lean. I hit a PR almost every workout. Um, That's the dream, man. And I'm only going Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Now, mm -hmm. I'm a big 
I'm a big advocate for intermittent fasting too, and just prolonged fasting in general. And okay, yeah, it, yeah, has, yeah. it has muscle retention benefits. But before we get into that, I did want to talk about why I agree with you with deadlifts before I mm -hmm. forget and we move on. So yeah, I really advocate for doing sumo deadlifts, like wide leg spread deadlifts. Mm -hmm. um, because not only are they more functional and you have less chance to get hurt, but it, it works your muscles better. So mm -hmm. what I will do actually is I, I will go through my workouts about every eight weeks. So every eight okay. weeks I'll switch to a different workout plan. So I don't plateau. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so actually for this set of eight weeks I'm on right now, I'm doing sumo deadlifts, but mm -hmm. I only do two sets and I do upwards of 15 to 30 reps. Now, for all the viewers that are going to watch this on YouTube, because I know there's not too many people watching the live right now, but for everyone that's going to be watching yeah. on YouTube later, can you tell them why I do 15 to, to 30 reps of lower weight, like between 135 to 200, as opposed to doing six to eight reps of like 315 plus? So you want... You said why you do 15 to 30 reps of a lower weight as opposed to six to eight reps of a crazy high weight? Right. On, on a big, on a big close chain movement lift, like deadlifts. Yeah. Okay. So, well, first off, you're going to reduce your risk for injury. Yeah. That's obvious step one, but also you, that's a functionality movement. Like when I say that, that is something that you're incorporating into your life every day is squatting down and picking something up. You one want to get your right. body acclimated to how that works because mm -hmm. You, people don't realize they're doing a form of a deadlift almost every day. Yeah. You and literally so, stand up out of your chair. You're doing a form of a deadlift. Precisely. And so what that does is that'll also translate to, like I said, real life and you want to get your body down with that. And also just, it's going to increase time under tension, which some people refer to as tut. If right. you've heard of it, is right. that right? Yeah. But Time under tension is also going to help increase, one, your muscle endurance, but it's also going to help the muscle fibers in there grow a little bit more than yeah. as opposed to you crushing a five, five uh, rep deadlift. Say you did it in 15 seconds. You did five reps. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, you did way more weight, but your muscles are not on, under stress for the period of time that yeah. you have when you're doing 15 to 30 reps, it's going to help increase. It's going to increase everything as well as um, what cardiovascular levels that right. are going to, um, cause your heart, obviously that's going to be the biggest thing when you're working out. People don't mm -hmm. understand that. And so when you keep it lighter weight, you are one reducing your risk for injury. You're two increasing the time under tension, which is going to increase your muscular strength and your muscular stamina. You're uh, increasing your cardiovascular stamina, and oh, it just slipped my mind. Yeah. What no, was, you're good, John. I mean, you, you yeah. pretty much said everything I was going to say, so congratulations. You, you passed the test. <laughs> That's what we like there. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. But, yeah, so I advocate for doing um, higher reps with lower weight for legs for all of those reasons. But for upper body, I do do – higher weight with lower reps for the sake of building a uh, more muscle mass because mm -hmm. it's more aesthetically pleasing to have like yeah. a bigger upper body like nice wide shoulders and then like thin not thin but like lean muscular legs because like from a functionality standpoint how often are you going to pick something up that's over like 300 pounds probably not very often but how that's often nice. are you going to need to pick something up and hold it that's maybe less than 135 pounds, probably way more often. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's why I advocate for doing lower weight on, on legs for more reps and higher weight for upper body with lower reps. And it just makes the workout so much more enjoyable. Like I, I remember back when I was doing heavy weight, like super heavy weight with low reps for legs, like deadlift and legs and squats. And I would be miserable after the gym. Like I couldn't even sit in my car. I would feel like I was going to throw up sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. And like, it would be hard for me to tell other people to do that. You know what I mean? Knowing the yeah. way that it makes me feel. And I understand that if I did that more often, that mm -hmm. it wouldn't be as, it wouldn't be as, as like shitty, you know, but mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is like, 
naturally it just looks so much better to have like lean chiseled legs as opposed to having like massive like bodybuilder legs because it just it's just not functional like if you're going to go out and run or sprint or play a pickup game of basketball like if you have massive huge tree trunk quadriceps like that's not going to be functional you know what i mean like if you're say yeah. barkley playing football then that's functional but if you're just going to the gym then that's not mm -hmm. functional you know yeah I completely know what you mean, man. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so you wanted to go ahead. I was just going to say, you wanted to talk a little bit about intermittent fasting. Yeah. I was literally just about to go into that, but before I do, what is your, um, cause I've been talking for a while. What's your like diet approach, like lifestyle diet? Like what do you do or what do you advocate for? So I am at the point where I've done it for so long that, um, I can, one, I track everything I do every day. Mm -hmm. I've done it for so long that even if I'm not tracking, I'm still tracking in my head. And I've gotten to a point where I can see a plate of food and barring we go to a restaurant where they're using oils and stuff that I don't know what they're using. Yeah. Can I can tell it. you, I can give you, yeah, the ballpark of how many calories and macronutrients are in there. Yep. But what well, I've, personally advocate for people starting out on a diet like it's taken me two three plus years of tracking and understanding everything to get to where I'm at with someone offering me a slice of cake or a piece of pizza and me saying you know I'm okay you know yeah. the discipline takes a long time to build up so what I advocate for people is hypothetical scenario you get a new client in and their diet is like the worst it could be. I'm talking, what are you doing for breakfast? Uh, I either muffins, make pancakes. muffins and pancakes for breakfast. I'll eat the leftover pizza. Um, Cereal. Exactly. Freaking after cinnamon I do that, Toast Crunch, Lucky Charms. All the sugary stuff. And it's after I do that, I'll, um, you know, I'll Skin snack milk. on whatever we have in the fridge, whether it be Cheez-Its or popcorn or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then... I don't eat lunch. I just snack throughout the day. And then for dinner, I'll either go out or order pizza, pizza or pick some fast food up on the way home. <laughs> right. Dude, and it, so, pause. Before you continue, yeah. bro, you would be shocked at how many people actually eat like that. And they think it's healthy. They think they're it's like, okay. yeah, they, they're like, yeah, complex carbs are in pizza. That gives me energy. And breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And what else am I supposed to eat other than cereal? Cereal is good for you because milk, dude. And people actually think that it's healthy. And it's like – Bro, you're like killing yourself. But exactly. anyway, go ahead and continue. And they, to speak on what you're saying right there is they keep going and then they counter it by saying, oh, it's okay because I don't have a meal during the middle of the day. So I, I counter it out that way. And I'm like, that, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, if you, you would counter just do it out. What? Like people, they, they make up this reasoning in their head and it makes sense exactly. to them, even though like scientifically it doesn't make any sense. That's exactly what they do. But getting back to what I was saying about it is that like, say that is their diet. It, we're going in and we're literally on square one. Like you have the worst diet I can, I can see. Obviously, <laughs> right. yeah. obviously I cannot tell you to strip everything back and we're going to make wholesale changes to everything because unless they are in the such slim part of the population on the planet, that would be able to say, you know what, let's strip everything back and I'm going to be 100% committed and I'm going to not cheat ever. If you're Isn't one of those crazy, people, bro, like, like people it, will actually be like, I'll do anything to get healthy. And then you tell them the simplest thing and they're like, hi, I can't do that. Or I won't be able to stick to that. But exactly. bro, like you just said you do anything. And then it's like, oh, well, how about you cut out like this one, like stupid habit that you're doing. And it's like, I, I can't. Exactly, <laughs> dude. So like, if you're watching this on the live, on the YouTube, whatever it be on, and you're in that like less than 1% of the population on the planet that is able to actually completely change your diet in one day and stick to it, more power to you. That's awesome. But right. obviously, majority of the people cannot do that. And so what I say is, okay, your breakfast every morning is cinnamon toast crunch. You snack throughout the day, and then you have pizza for dinner. This is what we're going to do. And then beers till you fall asleep. Exactly. I say, this is what we're going to do for the first week, literally the first week, 
you can eat your Captain Crunch, your Cinnamon Toast Crunch, whatever. Mm -hmm. First step we're going to do is we're going to take out the milk and put in almond milk. That, that's the first step. Secondly, we're not going to snack throughout the day. You can have a protein bar or something that is better for you than a bag of Cheez-Its. Mm -hmm. We're going to incorporate a lunch. Your lunch is going to be a salad with some kind of lean protein. We're going to get some protein in there, give you a salad. And then for dinner, go crazy. It, not crazy, but if, you, if your dinner is usually With, a couple reason. slices of pizza, if your dinner is usually a couple slices of pizza, you know what? Keep eating that pizza for the first week. And 99% of the time, they hear that and they're like, well, yeah, I can do that. It's the, like one week and I can keep eating my breakfast, just substitute the milk for a little bit healthier milk. Mm -hmm. All I really have to do is incorporate a salad and some <coughs> chicken and take mm -hmm. out my snacking. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So then you're a week in. You've been eating your salad. You've been um, choosing the skim, uh, the almond milk over skim or whole milk, whatever. You've cut out the snacks. Now we strip another thing back, whether it be for the next three weeks, the next month or whatever. This is what we're going to do. You can keep having your Captain Crunch in a bowl but we're going to add some eggs in there. We're going to add some, not in the cereal, but we're going to add some <laughs> eggs. We're going to add Put some, some protein. Eggs in your cereal. <laughs> we're going to add some protein to that breakfast. You're going to keep eating the salad and the grilled chicken mm -hmm. and keep having the healthy snack. And then we're going to add another type of lean protein and some veggies to your dinner. So then they're like, okay, I was able to cut back on my snacking and add the salad for the first week. I can definitely just add some protein to my breakfast and to my dinner. And then we're getting more protein into their diet. And okay. then by the time you're a month in, that's when you start saying, all right, your breakfast is no longer Captain Crunch or freaking Cinnamon Toast Crunch, any kind of sugary thing. What we're going to mm -hmm. do is we're going to have some oatmeal or we're going to have some fruit with some eggs and get some protein and some healthy carbs in there to kickstart your day then okay that's our breakfast we've got a protein bar for our snack we've got a salad and some grilled chicken for lunch now by the time you're a month in and you're having one rough meal throughout the day mm -hmm. at most so then after you get that down okay we switch the dinner and by the time you're two months three months in which i know to sound, some people may sound like a really long time but in the fitness world, two, three months is not a lot of time. And right. so, yeah, you can't make too much gains in, in two months. Exactly. So, and this is starting from like step one on a diet where you are as bad as it gets. By the third yeah. month, you're in there and your diet has gone from sugary cereal, Cheez Its, no lunch, and pizza for dinner to oatmeal with a banana, some eggs, with um, a cup of black coffee if you drink coffee for breakfast to a protein bar and a healthy snack then to a salad and grilled chicken for lunch and then grilled chicken some white rice and veggies for dinner in three months and now you can build on that and then we can really play around with it once you get your discipline levels down right so that's how i prefer to do nutrition is to not make wholesale changes fast at all i like to okay. really make sure that because I'm not here to give you a change for four months for five months where, okay, once I leave, you're right back to your old diet. I'm here. Right. And my job is to make sure that you stay healthy and build a healthy lifestyle as opposed to go on a diet. I'm not giving you a diet. I'm teaching you how to live a healthier lifestyle. So when I'm not mm -hmm. here to coach you and help you out, you know exactly what to do and you've been given all the tools and you just keep going. Okay. So that we agree with 100% as far as turning it into a lifestyle, as opposed to having it just be a diet, because see, for me, you know, I'd be a little bit different because I see that you're not like big on fasting, but for me, mm -hmm. I would make small changes too. But the way that I would do it is I would say, Hey, you can still eat all those, all those foods. Let's just use the same foods you were talking about. Um, whether it's, you know, um, 
sugar cereal and then snacks throughout the day and then um, like pizza at night with beer. I would say, so you can still have all that stuff, but the thing is we're going to push it back. So yeah. when, when do you have dinner? Let's just say they have dinner at like 7 p.m. All right, so then mm-hmm. you don't eat again until um, like noon the next day until like lunchtime. And then you could still have all that garbage food that you were eating in the first place. And so what, what's going to happen is they're going to have a shorter eating window. And then during that shorter eating window, you know, they can eat whatever they want within reason. I mean, don't go freaking mm-hmm. crazy. Like don't have a whole box of cupcakes. Like let's not be ridiculous, you know? Yeah. But since their eating window is going to be so much shorter in theory, they're going to be in a caloric deficit because they won't have as mu- they won't have enough time to eat as much food. So when you're in a caloric deficit, you know, you can't gain weight if you're not eating like it, eating more calories than you're expending. You know what I mean? Precisely. And whether you're mm-hmm. exercising or not, um, that still holds true because you can't, or, or your body naturally burns calories even when like you're just asleep or you're just breathing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the more they do that, like let, let's say I had someone that was, that was brand new like you did and, and we were starting from scratch. Basically, you know, I could have them start, oh, go ahead and start with like a 12-hour a fast. So you're, you're including the time that you're asleep, that's eight hours plus, you know, until you eat your first meal. So then after they do that for like a week, okay, push it to 13 or 14. And then after they do that for a couple of weeks till it feels normal, okay, do it for like 15 or 16. And then the more they can push it to, the more like natural it'll be. Or I guess I should say this, this the slower they incorporate it in, the more natural it will be where, uh, as opposed to if I was just like, oh, jump right into it, do like a 23 hour fast tomorrow and eat one meal. Like they're going to be miserable and they'll never do it again. You know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So the slower you can incorporate that into your life, the more natural it will be because your body naturally adapts to stuff. Like for example, if you took a really healthy person that ate clean all the time and you were like, all right, today you're only allowed to eat like bro. A couple, I think it was like two years ago, I saw in like the cereal aisle, because I never go down the cereal aisle anymore, but I saw Mm -hmm. Jolly Ranchers cereal, bro. Did you know that that existed? I did not know that that existed. Yeah, so I saw that and I was like, oh my goodness, this is freaking crazy because people like, it's it's a shame because people will eat this and think like, oh, it's, it's breakfast, you know, like most important meal of the day, which is totally bogus because... You know, where did we even get this dogma from that breakfast is the most important meal of the day? Like it's, it's, it's totally bogus if I'm being totally honest, because, Mm -hmm. um, it comes from the food industry and not from the health industry. And what's the food industry care about? You know, the food industry cares about you eating more food. They don't give a shit about your health, you know? Exactly. So, So they're like, oh, eat three meals a day. Like nowadays, I hear people in the food industry talking about, oh, you should eat six meals a day, which is like totally absurd. Like you are going to mess your body up doing that. Like your insulin levels are going to spike all day. And like, for example, I might get off topic a little bit here, but I have a friend who is just diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Okay. So Mm -hmm. they prescribed him metformin and Genuvia. And I was like, okay, let's look and see what metformin and Genuvia do. So I was looking at um, the, the, the effects of metformin and Genuvia, and I don't remember what they were off the top of my head, and I have screenshots of them, but I can't pull them up while I'm on the live or the live will end. But basically yeah. what I did is, is I looked up those, and I sent them to him, and I was like, okay, now let's look up and see if any diets – can also do these exact same things. And bro, fasting does the exact same things as metformin and Genuvia for the purposes that you would take them for. And I'm like, dude, literally just fast for like 16, 17 hours a day every day and cut your carbs. And like, you can reverse your type two diabetes. You know what I mean? And he was like, Mm -hmm. no, but but my doctor, but like my sister is a doctor and like doctors, dude, like science, dude, drugs. And I'm like, Bro, like, let's look at the side effects of Genuvia and um, metformin. And I pulled them up, and you know, just as well as I do, side effects of drugs are really just the effects, you know? 
Exactly. They just call them side effects, but really it's just things that the drugs do. And like mm -hmm. Met Foreman can give you diarrhea and he literally texted me today and he was like, bro, I had diarrhea so bad. And I'm like, dude, that's not and good. Why? You know, you're, you're losing weight, but it's not the body fat weight that you're losing. You're losing water weight, which is like really freaking scary. You know, make sure you're drinking enough water or you're going to freaking die. You know, like yeah. that Met Foreman is taking all of your water weight out of your body through like your fecal matter, you know? Mm -hmm. And Genuvia is just as bad as metformin, if not worse. Like I saw that one of the potential side effects of Genuvia was like Stevens Johnson syndrome. And that's like when you get rashes all over your body. I told him, bro, like you're getting married in October. I don't want to be at your wedding. And you have rash, like a rash all over your face because you were taking this garbage drug mm -hmm. that you shouldn't have been taking in the first place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you would have mm -hmm. just been fasting, which <clears throat> does all the same things as these drugs, then you could have reversed your type 2 diabetes, lost a ton of weight before your wedding, and looked great. But instead, he's like, yeah, I'll fast and do keto and take the drugs. And I'm like, okay, like you can do that if you want to, but just be aware that you're going to get these side effects, you know? And mm -hmm. it's just so unfortunate because people don't understand that the pharmaceutical industry is <clears throat> like doctors. I don't want to say they're brainwashed, but like they are for like doctors are force fed through college. Like drugs are the only solution. Um, and I recently looked up how many like nutrition classes pharmacists or like, like medical students have to take, mm -hmm. they have to take like less than seven hours, like credit yeah. hours of, of nutrition classes, bro. That's absurd. They yeah. don't understand how food affects the body. All they know is give drugs to put a mask on the symptoms of the, um, disorder or disability that you have which yeah. is so bad because the pharmaceutical industry when it comes down to it is actually pure evil because really every drug that they give you is going to have side effects and mm -hmm. then they give you more drugs to combat the side effects of those drugs and then those drugs give you side effects so then they pump you full of more drugs mm -hmm. to combat the side effects of those drugs and it's just a never-ending cycle that the pharmaceutical industry has invented to keep you essentially hooked on drugs because the pharmaceutical industry is worth, you know, I don't even know how much money, probably billions. Same with the food industry. And obviously the mm -hmm. food industry and the, and the pharmaceutical industry, they don't care about your health. They care about like the food industry. They care about you eating food and the pharmaceutical industry. They care about you taking drugs, you know, precisely. And if they didn't care about that, like, let's say someone wanted to present a good faith army argument and be like, no, dude, the, the pharmaceutical industry definitely cares about your health. They want you to get better. Okay, if that were the case, why do they prescribe drugs like oxys and Vicodin and stuff that you can take one time and get addicted to? Like these drugs were made for people on their deathbed who have like cancer that are going to die. And nowadays you can go to your doctor and be like, hey, I have trouble sleeping or hey, I have back pain. And they'll just give it to you like willy nilly. Like it's scary, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to speak on that I think it personally <clears throat> comes back to this is a U.S. problem in particular, but it's a people problem, and that's laziness. And yeah. it's the laziness of one, like you did for your friend. You went and looked up what those things actually did to the body. Well, yeah, but that's because I'm a health nerd. You know what I mean? I love yeah. doing this kind of stuff, and you do too, so we get it. But like other people exactly. don't love to do that. They would rather just be like, oh, I'll just go to my doctor and let him give me drugs and then I don't have to think about it anymore. Precisely. And like the point I want to make to that is we are health nerds. We know what you, you we know that obviously doing it a natural way is far better than taking some synthetic drug that has side effects. But the sad reality is that it's so hard to get that across to people that, okay, this drug could make you better, but how about we switch up your diet? We switch up your lifestyle. You don't have the side effects from the drug. You, you're not paying all this money to see a doctor to do all this stuff. You're not pumped full of drugs and then even more drugs. Instead, what we're doing is we're giving you a healthier lifestyle to live. You're eating healthier foods. You're getting right. more active and you won't see the doctor nearly as much. How many times... Barring some 
barring some bodybuilder, powerlifter that's taking SARMs, that's taking steroids, that's taking whatever, right? You don't see them going to the doctor. You don't. I cannot tell you personally the last time that I fell ill where I could not move my bed, from, yeah. move from my bed, mm-hmm. and that all reverts back to me making a lifestyle change and being able to eat healthier, take vitamins daily, take nutrients that are needed to just boost your immune system, combat things like people just waking up and taking a elderberry or a vitamin C or something along those lines every day. For some people, that's the difference between three or four doctor's visits for the whole year. Right. But they don't really grasp that. And so it's, like I well, said, it's not it's that they don't. Like, it's not that they don't grasp it. It's that they don't care. And the reason they don't care is because it's way easier for them to go to the doctor and get drugs than it is for them to make a lifestyle change. Because when you make a lifestyle change, you still have to deal with your problems for weeks or even, maybe even months or years before they finally start to go away. If you take mm-hmm. drugs to to fix your physical problems or whatever the problem is it goes away immediately like you feel better immediately but at what cost yeah exactly and i just it's it's a frustrating i I, i'm sure you're probably frustrated with it as well that people are just so can be so like narrow-minded and be be so easy to take the lenient way out yeah when it's like if but at just... the same time, it's not their fault. So we can't really get upset because yeah. to a point they have been – I don't want to use the word brainwashed because it sounds like we're conspiracy theorists. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they have been like trained by society to trust the food industry and the pharmaceutical industry when really they shouldn't be. You know what I mean? Because all this stuff goes through the FDA. But like does the FDA mm-hmm. really have our best interests at heart if – these are all the things that they're allowing like back to the jolly rancher cereal bro like are we freaking kidding me like i could probably look at the ingredients list on there and not name one single real food exactly like forever i'm pretty sure i'm gonna remember the name of this it's called food inc i'm pretty sure that's what it's called it's a documentary for anyone that's watching and basically what it does is is they take a deep dive into the food industry and really show you what's going on. Like the amount of um, bacteria that gets into your food, the, the way they raise the animals, the amount of antibiotics and peptide, whatever you want to, whatever you want to say it, that they right. do to the animals before they make your food. And then mm-hmm. like Tyson chicken nugget farms, chicken oh, farms. Here we chicken go. <laughs> here we go. I'm sure. I'm sure people have heard of like what goes on there and they've seen videos and stuff. Right. There are thousands of chickens just being hauled into this little shed Mm -hmm. that can, and they literally cannot move. They're crapping all over themselves. They're peeing all over. They're doing everything all over themselves. And then they have some dude come in there, wring their neck, chop them up in there. You have your Tyson chicken nuggets. And someone goes to the store and says, Oh, look, 100, 200 calories, some protein in it with low fat and moderate carb. Yeah, let's get it. That's healthy. No. Like, they don't know how, where their food comes from and the whole process that goes into the food making. And the problem with, with, like you said, with the Tysons, and it's probably not just Tysons, but the Mm -hmm. the problem with that is, and and it goes for, like, cows, too, and all kinds of farm animals. Um, These animals are being injected with all kinds of hormones, And then they're being fed, they're being fed garbage. They're being fed like literally um, like cardboard or just like, um, Mm -hmm. like they're eating their own poop. They're eating each other. So they're like cannibalistic. And then we eat that, you know what I mean? So all their muscles are built on the proteins that they ate, which came from like the cardboard they ate and their cannibalism, like eating each other and the like literal fecal matter that they were eating. So then we eat that, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That we consume that and that becomes our body, you know? Because yep. your, your body, like your, your muscle mass is made out of the foods that you eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like speaking on that is that these, um, these people will genetically modify the animals effectively. And what that's... Right, through so like I'm hormone therapy is, and all kinds of... Exactly. Like, and what I'm saying by that is 
people don't realize that they, the people that raise these animals, <sighs> raise them to get the biggest, juiciest cut of meat they possibly can. Yeah, exactly. And they, because they will make the most money off of it, and they do not care how they get that. Whether that be, okay, there's a cow out there, we're going to pump him full of hormones for the next right. however long to get him fattened up. Yeah, and make the sure scariest thing is, bro, they're allowed to do that. Like the exactly. the, the World Health Organization or FDA or whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. Like that, mm -hmm. they allow that. You know what I mean? Like these farms yep. and like they have to, they have to show how they're making this food, whether it's crops or, or meat or whatever. And the, the government just doesn't really care. And I think the U.S. government is actually much worse than other countries, but I can't like, like I don't have any like evidence to be like, oh, such and such countries do X, Y, and Z. But yeah, I'm yeah. assuming that that the United States is by far one of the worst. Mm hmm. I can I completely second you with that. I mean, you just look at you look even at when our... you're looking at our school lunches, bro. Like our public school lunches are garbage. Like mm -hmm. I, I used to teach at a public school that they had corn dogs every single week. Um, mm -hmm. And like I was, I was teaching health at a middle school in Morgantown, West Virginia. And I forget why we were on this topic, but I ended up showing them the United States school lunches as compared to like different Asian country school lunches. And they have like these amazing school lunches in like Japan and and you still hear me yeah okay cool my headphones died but like got you it's just funny because you you don't see that here exactly and speaking on the middle school lunches like i said earlier i'm 21 so i am i've been in middle school high school lunches pretty recently i i've seen the the corn dogs that are made out of what looks like to be rubber that yeah, flop around. I've seen the the slider hamburgers that the patty is a hockey puck. Right, I've right, seen right. all that stuff. I've seen the um the chicken tenders that come out and they are they look like they were put in a microwave for twenty seconds and just taken out, which they probably were. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, what gets me also about the school lunches is it's like you'll go through the line and then all the younger audience watching this will know uh, what I'm talking about with this. And you being the teacher and working in the school, you'll know about this, but you get to the checkout line where you're getting ready to pay for the lunch. And what do you see a big box of right next to the lunch lady? You see a big box of the biggest cookies you could ever, yeah, ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And, and what do the lunch ladies say? You get to the end and they go, Oh, it'll be four, four or five dollars today. Would you like to add two cookies for an extra dollar? Yeah. And 75 to 80 percent of those kids of course yeah i'd like to add two cookies only a dollar yeah that's a deal mm -hmm. and that's just it just keeps going and going and going and those cookies are good too man those those lunch those cafeteria cookies those always got me when i was in high school they dude when i tell you if i played so i played sports in high school that was my thing and mm -hmm. that's probably why i've been able to gotten it been able to get into fitness so easily but let me tell you if i didn't play sports I tell people all the time, I would have been easily, easily overweight, and it wouldn't have even been close. My diet in high school, when I tell people what my diet was in high school, they don't believe me because it was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad, man. Yeah. But we made it out. Yeah. Well, that's why a bunch of people graduate high school, um, and then they gain the freshman 15 or whatever but it's because you're just way more active in high school and then when you're not in high school anymore you know playing sports or whatever um sitting down most of the day sleeping in every day um mm -hmm. it's so much easier to gain weight via exactly. activity and just eating way more um but yeah is there anything else you wanted to touch on before we get off here it's been about 45 minutes yeah um i think that's it i think we hit on some pretty good points and yeah i really enjoyed you having me on man yeah dude Absolutely. We could definitely do this again sometime. Um, everybody that's on here from my channel, go ahead and follow uh, John's channel. Likewise. Everybody on here is from John's channel watching me. Go ahead and follow my IG and then subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give and him a follow. Link in my bio. And then, uh, John, we'll, we'll keep in touch. I'm going to go ahead and save this video. And I'll post it to my um, 
YouTube. So when I do that, I'll, I'll be able to DM it to you or maybe I'll just post it on my IG so you can see it there. And I'll let you know. Heck yeah, bro. Let me know and I'll throw it up there. Get all my viewers to watch it as well. All right. Peace out, John. It was nice talking yeah. to you. Have a good one, bro. You too.